What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing video. As you see, I have the pier cart with me. We're about to get out on the beach. So I welcome you to join me, sit back, relax, and let's go do some surf fishing. All right, y'all, I'm out here on the beach. So my bait of choice is gonna be some fresh dead shrimp but also some fish gum. This has been one of the longest sponsors of the channel. If you wanna check them out, I'll link their website down in the description below. And right now I got a double drop Bama saltwater rig tied on, and then I'll be using nine foot surf rods. These are medium moderate action, and pretty much a 5,000 size reel on each rod with about 90 yards of 20 pound monofilament and then 20 pound braid backing in case I get into something big and it wants to pull some line out. So let's go ahead and get these baits casted out. I already have them baited up just like that, really simple. And let's see if we can find us some fish. No, I'm excited. I feel really good about this. You know, wintertime fishing, it's really difficult to find the fortitude to wake up and get out on the beach and get wet when it's 40 degrees outside or 35 degrees. But I feel pretty confident in my baits. So let's go ahead and put our tackle to the test and see what this fish gum and shrimp will get us today. Yo, this one is going down. Yo, this just freaking, oh man, this sucker just went down for the count. Yo, wonder what I have. This one, oh, this one's on the 10 pound leader too. <laughs> I'm gonna have to play it nice and soft with it being on the 10 pound leader. I hope it's a big red fish. That would be so awesome. <laughs> I hope so. I've been putting in the time this morning. I don't know if you noticed, but I moved spots after my first few casts because I didn't get a bite for like about an hour. And now I have this fish. I have to play them. I have to play him a lot longer than I would like to because this leader, I tied a 10 pound test leader on this one. And that's the one they're gonna to decide to hit every time. <laughs> I'm still on my top shot though. So I still got my 20 pound top shot. It's in that drag. Oh man. That, I'm playing them soft, I'm playing them soft swimming that way Let's see if i'm falling down the beach it's going under this one yeah oh, dang it. put too much pressure on them i went down to a 10 pound leader for whiting dang that's that's Ah, that makes me feel so bad. <laughs> but it happens, it happens. All you can do is tie back up again. I'm definitely gonna go with a little bit bigger leader. Now that I know there's bigger fish out there. I wanna say that was a big red fish. The stingray would've just went and sat on the bottom the whole time. That one actually pulled out, came back in, its head shook, it pulled out again, and I was able to get it close. But, uh, man, that's... That's heartbreaking right there. That is heartbreaking. The big fish decides to hit the smallest one. The other one I got a 20 pound leader on. So, all right, let's not sulk about it. Let's get another, another rig tied up and another bait. And maybe we can make up for it. I don't know yet. That's, that still hurts. <laughs> all right. All right, well, I've tried best of my ability today and I haven't got another bite since. So it just shows you that it doesn't always work out. So you don't just always go out there and catch something and you can learn from your mistakes. I learn every single day and I hope y'all do too. So I will see you at a different place here in a bit. What is going on everybody? Welcome back. It is so windy. I hope that y'all can hear me, but we're gonna get out on the beach today and try to do some fishing with some blue crabs. So without further ado, Let's go ahead, get on the beach, get set up, and get to fishing. All right, y'all, I have this blue crab here. That's what I'm gonna be using as bait. So first thing I'm gonna do is pop that shell off. Pretty easy to do, just like that. And then I'm gonna pop these claws off. Save these for later. Now, 
I'm gonna take a knife, which a lot of times you can kind of use shears for this, but, but this knife will do the job just fine. And I'm gonna cut it in half again. All right, y'all, all I did was quarter up that blue crab here. And then I'm gonna come over to this Frisky Fins Pompano rig. They got a little bit bigger circle hooks on them and bait up this crab. I'm after something pretty big. We have a nice and calm gulf today because that strong north wind. Hopefully we can get into a big black drum or redfish. But we got that circle hook ran through there. We're gonna do the same things on both rigs. Now, since we have a calm gulf, all I'm running is a two and a half ounce pyramid weight on both my setups. Let's go ahead and cast these rods out and see if we can get on a big fish. Shouldn't have to do a very long cast today. We'll get right here on this little sandbar. There's one cast. A nine foot rod normally gets the job done here in the Gulf of Mexico. Now you can go a little bit longer if it's rough or if you have a real shallow beach, but I use the nine foot rods all the time and it gets the job done. This one's going off. This one's going off. I didn't even get a chance to set the other one out and this one already has one on it. Oh, big fish, good fish. See on these circle hooks, you don't have to sit there and yank the hook to get a hook set. Just put some pressure on it, you know, some good pressure, and start reeling. That's a good fish. Woo! <laughs> I hope it's a big red or a big black drum. <laughs> First cast. Let's hope it stays pinned. Uh. Telling you, blue crab, you can catch them in the bays, and we caught some fresh blue crab and got hooked up instant. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> it's a big fish. Come on, buddy. That didn't take long at all on the blue crab. <laughs> While we were out here a whole minute, literally. I think it's a redfish or a black drum. I see it. It's definitely a drum. I just saw its mouth. Come on. It's so cold, y'all. It's like 30 degrees outside. This is a big black drum. I just see, I'm seeing, I'm looking at it right now. Here it is, right, right next to the beach. Can we do this without getting too wet? I have a lot of confidence in that circle hook. Here he is. Ow, I just got stuck in wet. Oh my gosh, that was cold. Woo! <laughs> That's a big black drum. Look where this frisky fins rig is. That circle hook right in the corner of its mouth. He cannot resist that blue crab. Now these big ones are normally full of worms. They are edible, but we're gonna let them go because these are old fish. They fight hard and they're just beautiful, in my opinion, you know, in an ugly kind of way. But let's go ahead and toss them back. Big black drum. Keep these out of the water as least as possible if you don't plan on keeping them. Come on. Oh, look, I'm getting wet for you, okay? Oh, he's drumming. And healthy, beautiful release. Woo, that is awesome. <laughs> I'm soaking wet. I didn't even cast out my other rod. It's still sitting there baited up. And that one started Da, 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 do, went straight down. They cannot resist crabs. I mean, it's like 30 something degrees out today here in Alabama. Wintertime surf fishing can be really hard, but sometimes you just gotta put forth that extra effort or change it up a little bit. And you know, I caught those crabs, came out here, chunked them up and immediately got bit. All right, y'all, that was pretty fun. I was able to get redemption from the first time I went out and I had lost that fish. I wasn't very happy about that. But all you can do is get back out and try again. And as you saw, I was able to get back out here and get redemption and catch that big old, big ugly black drum. <laughs> that's what they, that's what we call them, big uglies. But uh, those are such cool fish. The bigger they get, they're really old fish, you know? If you catch like a 35 pound black drum or so, I'm not a biologist, but I want to say they're around 35 to 40 years old or they can get up to that age. So that's pretty amazing. And I like to toss them back so they can continue to make more black drum. Those bigger ones get pretty wormy, but they are edible. 
if you catch the small ones there's no size limit here in alabama you catch a small black drum those are very fine and delicate meat just like a redfish y'all check out this little moon jelly here you see a lot of these washed up on the beach they're in big numbers they don't hurt you they don't have really any stingers on you like i said i'm not a biologist or anything but you can touch these things they don't hurt you but you want to make sure you know what it is before you do that but these are moon jellyfish really cool looking things this one's just washed up on the beach jellyfish are so astounding you know how they've been around for millions of years and they don't really have a brain or really hardly any organs but somehow they're able to survive that long <laughs> i'm sure there's a meme or a saying about that if you don't have a brain or something i don't know but we'll set this thing back but pretty cool thing <laughs> goofy looking you know before you touch any marine life and stuff you want to make sure you know what it is so you don't get stung but these little moon jellies you know you can handle them they're they're kind of cool so. i appreciate frisky fins for sending me some rigs if you want to check them out they're in a bunch of tackle shops down here and you can check them out on facebook i'll include the link down below as well but i appreciate y'all for watching if you enjoy content like this don't forget to hit that like and comment button and also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already allow this channel to grow so we can make more content for you We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.